Look, what are they feeding them, those kids down in LSU? Because <laughs> it's like they're ha- are they half alligator or, or what? Because they produce wide receivers in bunches, man, every year. Greetings and salutations and welcome to the Odd Coaches Podcast. I am your host, Dr. Keith Adams, and with us today on this Top Shelf Tuesday, academic and athletic consultant for the CK State Project, George Hawker. George, how you doing, man? Feeling blessed to be here, my brother. Feeling All blessed. Right. All right, so on today's show, we're going to talk NFL draft in segment one. We're going to talk about an underreported story in segment two, and just some random NFL issues and things in segment three. But first, the NFL draft begins April 25th with the first round, followed by the second and third rounds on April 26th. And the draft concludes April 27th with rounds four through seven. George, here's who's on the guest list to be in the green room, if you will. Quarterbacks, Caleb Williams, Jaden Daniels, and Drake May have been invited. Any thoughts on any of those three quarterbacks, is there any one in particular you are interested in? Um, I'm first and foremost, I'm wondering why they just didn't invite all the quarterbacks, but you know, <laughs> um uh interested to see who goes where. Uh who go I I, I kind of figure Caleb's gonna go first, but because there's so much uh hoopla going on around between Jalen Daniels and Drake May. Um, which one goes who which one goes first? Because he they're both on everybody's board that are gonna be up there drafting. You hear daily, you hear pros and cons between who you like this one and or that one. So it's my and yeah, it's gonna be real interesting to see where the one those two go and who goes first. That's what it's gonna be. All right. We've got some wide receivers invited. Marvin Harrison Jr. Uh, LSU teammates, Mark Neighbors and Brian Thomas Jr. And Washington's guy, I really like him, uh, uh, Rome Oduze, if I'm not mistaken. Mm-hmm. Uh, any one of those you want for your squad? Not that Shit, you I, can draft. I, I, I want all of them. <laughs> I want all of them because all of them are monsters. Can we – I'll go real quick, though. Um, and and it, it, the shout-out to Ed Allen if, he, if he's listening. Um, look, what are they feeding them, those kids down in LSU? Because <laughs> it's like they're ha- are they half alligator or, or what? Because they produce wide receivers in bunches, man, every year. And different it's, coaching um, staff. Different co- it doesn't matter. It's like they pull them out to buy you, and we're going to create a wide receiver. He's going to be he's going to be this, this, and this, and they just keep coming. So shout out to LSU and and the Gator men they got coming out down there. <laughs> All right. There's an Alabama contingencies. Nick Saban's uh, final uh, coaching class, if you will. Linebacker Dallas Turner, cornerback Terry and all, uh, Arnold, and mm. offensive tackle J.C. Latham uh, will also be invited to the green room. Which of those three Alabama players do you think will make the most impact? They're all dogs. Tierra and Arnold is a dog. He is a monster. Um, so you know, all the they're all first, second round talents. They'll all be on the roster somewhere, making some team better. Cause so they they that's that's a good crop of defensive men, defensive men coming out right there. All right, and the close for me, top six projected picks, quarterbacks, wide receiver. Uh look for a run uh on offensive linemen in the middle of the first round. And George, edge rushers and cornerbacks seem to be the flavor for this oh. first round on the defensive side. Any final thoughts in terms of who's actually going to be at the draft for the first round uh, uh, or, or any direction you want to go in? I, I think that it'll be, you know, you'll probably see more to, a number of the quarterbacks there, but it's going to be a run. You, it, There might not be a team. It'll be crazy because there might not be – more than half the league is going to come out of there out of the draft with it drafting at least one wide receiver um, because they're the, the crop is so deep. What I'm going to be interested in, especially on the second and third day, when is the first running back going to go? <laughs> oh, you know what? And yeah. It. And that's going to be interesting to see when the first running back is going to go, which is crazy for us because wow. we, we grew up in a time where, you could name the feature running back for every NFL team. Every NFL team was defined by their running back and their quarterback. 
And now we're at the point where you'll be lucky if you can name five of them. And yeah. and they're not even the biggest. They weren't even the biggest things talked about in Heisman or the draft. So now it's go, I'm going to be real interested to see when the first running back goes. All right. So, fans, when we get back, we're going to actually talk about a player who more likely than not won't get drafted and talk about his story. We'll be right back on the Eye Coaches podcast. The reviews are in for Dr. Keith Adams' book, Finding the Balance, My Personal Journey to Academic and Athletic Success. College professor and student-athlete academic expert Dr. Lisa Rubin said, There is nothing out there like this book, so I do hope people will pay attention and give it a read. Former George Mason standout Fowler and Campbell said, Consider this book an opportunity to work directly with Dr. Adams just like I did. I assure you that there will be something you can take away that will be useful to you throughout your personal journey. Ryan Waite, a recent college graduate who is a software engineer, said, I like how the book is based on research, which makes it good for general students as well as student athletes. The book serves as both a memoir to Dr. Adams' 30-year academic and athletic career, as well as an instructional guide to assist student athletes, parents, coaches, teachers, and administrators navigate through the challenges of finding a better balance between academic and athletic success. The book includes over 15 personal stories and anecdotes from Dr. Adams, along with numerous former players and colleagues from a variety of sports and endeavors. You can order your copy at www.ckasaveproject.org. From the main page, simply click CKA Save Project Services and order the Find the Balance book. For more information, contact Dr. Keith Adams by email at cka at cka.saveproject.org. Welcome back to the Odd Coaches Podcast in segment two. I want to talk about a later round story of Talia Tagovailoa, and I did mispronounce, I'm sorry. He's a younger brother of Tua from the Dolphins, and Tua played at Alabama, and both brothers were on the roster. But unfortunately, uh, Leah played in a game, or too many games, so his waiver request was denied. The NCAA played a role in his declaring for the NFL draft because, unfortunately, uh, he played very little time in, like, five games during his time in Alabama. And I believe he played when Tua was hurt, too, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so now that we got that, let's actually talk about the evaluation. And George is one of the football people we talk to just in terms of evaluating football talent uh, as an athletic director. Uh, he has worked with a number of players who've played in the NFL and high major college football. So when Tua uh, attended the NBA, I'm sorry, the NFL scouting combine, he was measured at six feet tall, 217 pounds, but he's more likely like 5'11", 205, okay? Um, throws right-handed, finished his college career with over 11,000 passing yards, darn near every record at the University of Maryland. But George... He's just not looked upon as a draftable player. He may be invited to a camp. Talk to me about what you think about his game and any advice you may have for student athletes because this is a different time now. You can move. You got freedom of moving. You got all kinds of things. But at the end of the day, aim with 32 teams in the league, and they they cutthroat with how they evaluate you. Floor is yours. I, I tell them, you know, uh, right now, looking at him, um, I, I don't see him getting drafted. He's coming out at a really bad time because this is a deep uh, crop of quarterbacks, of NFL or NFL uh, prospect quarterbacks. Um, he's not real big. He doesn't have that giant cannon of an arm. Um, he played at Maryland. Not saying that Maryland's bad, but it's not one of those – not you know, one of the uh, major powerhouses that you would regularly see like Alabama was uh, on a regular. Um, so I think he had a really good career. Um, you know, do I think, I don't think he's going to get drafted. I, I think I see him probably as like a, a UFL quarterback. Um, if he can go down there and prove himself, maybe he'll get a chance to be a backup somewhere or, or something along those lines. Um, but you know, we'll see. Uh, yeah, I, I don't see his name being called in none of three days. Um, what I will say, it's unfortunate what happened to him 
because another year would have done him good because his prospects would have been a whole lot better if he came out next year. Um, not saying that he still would be an NFL quarterback, but he'd be looked at a lot different. I think that the you know kids going in today, especially with the way the um, the way the transfer portal is working, have to be very protective of themselves in their years because you only get four. Unless, you know, you get your red shirt year. And this is the, I think this is the last year for the COVID year. Mm -hmm. So you get, you got those four precious years. You can't have one when you know you're not going to play. Um, you can't have, you can't have one be in jeopardy or damaged. And he's one that, that got caught because of the system. Do I like the rule? No, I don't. Because like kids like him, only came in and played in mop up duty and stuff like that. I mean, he was like third on the on the roster and for quarterbacks, and I think he got somebody got hurt and they were killing whoever it was. And, and you know, Alabama was mopping the floor with their opponents. So and George, I want to add that Nick Saban and Alabama signed off on the waiver. Yes. The University of Maryland signed off on the waiver. Mm -hmm. So both schools. Going to what you said, this kid wants to do this and another year would be beneficial to him. Right. And the NCAA in this case said no. So I am in full agreement with you with that. Of This was an opportunity. You saw the circumstances. Right. This was not one of these situations where somebody's trying to beat the system. It was unique. <laughs> and we're in education. And, and I think as we will say later in the week, this was just a missed opportunity to help somebody yeah. that could have benefited from. And, 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 you know, in the NCAA, and this is, uh, this is going to get me on my problems with the NCAA again, instead of taking case by case with stuff, why hold steadfast to a rule where a kid got in for five minutes or whatever on mop up duty? It was like 63 to three. I mean, what, come on, man, this is where, the NCAA has continued to fall short and continue to find a, find itself in, in hot water with the schools. So, you know, I, I think it's, it's an unfair situation. And now he, he's going to have to – his road, if he gets to the league, it, it's going to have to be a windy, hilly road. Not everybody's road is always a straight, narrow path. And his was going to have some bumps in it anyway. But now it's made even worse. So – yeah. So to close this segment, Dr. Adams advice to student athletes, especially in this, this world today, one graduate, please use your skills to get a degree out of this thing, major in something that's going to benefit you. And remember, as, as George said, your playing timeline is a big deal. You've got to be very protective of your ability to do five years in four you know, to be able to play four and five years. So again, be very mindful of your time, make sure you graduate and, uh, you know, just be an educated consumer. And when we get back, we're going to talk about some news and notes uh, this week in the NFL. We'll be right back on the I Coaches podcast. The CKA Save Project is an industry leader in advocating for student athlete, academic and athletic needs. Through academic and athletic enrichment, the CKA Save Project is on the forefront of the issues facing 21st century student athletes. As student athletes continue to struggle to find a better balance between academic and athletic success, the CKA Save Project offers academic and athletic services to support student athlete academic success, including academic skills assessment, academic and athletic consulting, academic monitoring, academic and athletic workshops. For more information or to schedule a free consultation, contact Dr. Keith Adams by email at cka at cka.saveproject.org. Well, welcome back to the uh, Coaches Podcast. This is segment three. Got to do a Rasheed Rice update. And again, I'm glad my man George is here with me. Kansas City Chiefs wide receiver as of this week. Rasheed Rice was driving 119 miles an hour before causing a six-vehicle crash last month in Dallas. Um, the crash occurred in Texas. Uh, Rice and four other men were seen leaving the scene. So I want to go step by step with George. He did turn himself in. He was released on bond. And he said, and I quote, he will take full responsibility for his actions. So, George, 
Will he face jail time, in your opinion? Yes or no? Depends on how good his lawyer is, but yeah, probably. Probably. There's probably going to be a little jail time with that. All right. Do you think he will play this season? And if so, how many games? Um, the problem is he picked the wrong time for this to happen because the wide receiver market is so deep. Um, he might, I don't know if he's going to, I don't know if he gets a, if he, if he gets a season in this season, it will be like, he only get ha maybe half the season at the most, at the most, he's not going to get a full season in this year. All right. And fans, just so you'll know, he is facing one count of aggravated assault. One count of collision involving serious bodily injury and six counts of collision involving injury. And that is according to police reports. I think based on the fact that he took full responsibility, there is a chance that he can avoid jail time. But being on Kansas City, I think will hurt him because Andy Reid's son had an issue uh, previously and you don't want the, the thing of favoritism. Um, so again, and I do think the NFL will provide some semblance of discipline, maybe uh, one to three games, depending on, again, as George said, how good his attorney is. Uh, but this is, and, yeah, go ahead, George. And Keith, and what I was about to say is he he's in jeopardy right now because it could be with the Andy Reid and his son situation and how the NFL is doing, he's in jeopardy of just getting released, outright released right now. Um, because it, it, you know, as long if this doesn't stay as quiet as it's been, you know, it's been it has some 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 press, but it hasn't, you know, taken over the storylines. Um, if it had, he'd have been released automatically. Right now, I think they're still going with the wait and see kind of situation. He'll have to do some kind of treatment whatever they're gonna the nfl is gonna call it which is gonna cost him some games and that he's gonna have to do that while he's out so yeah man i it, it it's not he better keep his fingers crossed that he doesn't get released by the chiefs right about now all right uh there was a story this week on joe burrow and talking about taunting and again glad george is here because we talk a lot of smack in our uh circle so Joe Burrow was recently interviewed, and some of the things he said was very interesting. George, George, uh, Joe Burrow is pro taunting. Uh, he doesn't like the fifteen yard penalties for taunting. LSU and, boy, LSU <laughs> boy. <laughs> and the NFL actually has had fewer taunting penalties over the last few years. George, what are you thinking about taunting? I mean, as long as it doesn't go over the line with some things, I, I think that they got they went to the extreme. And when it first and I think I went go by the co first the college rules and now now and then they went to the NFL. I think that they went so far extreme that they, they used to. That's why it was called the no fun league. And now they <laughs> let a little they let a little bit come back. But. Oh, come on, man. You can't. It takes the fun out of the game. All I, right, I think George, we're educators, and you've been to youth football games, and I've yeah. been to youth football games. Yes. I've been to college games. Quite frankly, and I'm not an old man, get off my lawn most of the time, when a Bama makes a tackle and he jumps up, and, um, the majority of plays ends on tackle. What are we doing? You did your man. job. Can we go back to the huddle? Now, professionals are professionals. But, man, as Robert will tell you later on in this week, all of this stuff bleeds down, and it's a pain in the patookas when I'm watching routine plays get celebrated like it's the, the greatest thing in the world yeah. and in your face. Come on, yeah. man. That, well, that I can get. That, that <laughs> I'm with you when it's a routine play. But if I make a big play, can I go ahead? You know, let me put my hands in the air. Let me, you know, <laughs> it, it, you you sit here on you sit here during the NBA games and a regular dunk, somebody's gonna run down and put the too small thing in the I'm carrying the baby thing. I mean, come on. I mean, if I make a big play, like, give me time to celebrate. As long yeah. as long as I'm not offending anybody that and 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 going in, in somebody's face, that's one thing. The other thing is, uh, yeah, I'm with you. If I make a routine tackle, come on, man. I, I don't need to see you flexing and all that. And I know there's going to be some listeners out there that says, Keith Adams said that. 
Yes, when I played fans, I did wrestling moves. I wooed. I loaded my boot up on the free throw line, and my coach hated all of it. And uh, hey, Mouse, boom! That's a joke for like three people. Uh, when I blocked the shot, I said, hey, you know, anyway. All right. So, fans, to close out the show, and again, George will keep me uh, close to the vest. OJ Simpson died last. There's only two things I want to talk about with OJ because they're relevant to the show, The Chase. June 17th, 1994, I'm a senior in college. That was the day Simpson was in the back of the Bronco with Al Callens. And for me, the Knicks and the Rockets game was on, and that's what I remember. I'm watching the Knicks and Rockets game, and then they took it off, put it in the corner of the screen, and they showed the OJ chase. And I'm not ashamed to admit, but I was like, what's going on? And then once I found out what was going on, yeah, I didn't care about the Knicks and the Rockets. It was all about the OJ chase. Knicks won that game, but they lost the series. George, what do you remember about the chase? Yeah, it it was the first time we had that uh, TMZ type TV jump in it broke in right in right in the middle of the nba finals which was crazy as hell was playing george yeah and king was playing yep and 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 but we were glued to it because as soon as we found out what it was we were glued to it so no cell phones for for us at that time no that's what i remember man and and you know what i will say about oj and you know he's a divisive figure uh a lot of things that go on I think that, you know, we have to take it in two different situations. I don't think it nobody's death should be celebrated because I've seen a lot of crazy stuff come out about it, um, especially, you know, I don't think that's a good thing to do. And, and, and I think that a lot of people that have said some things need to look at their own house first before they start throwing stones at them. But at the same time, um, you know, because so many, you know, you had people's lives that changed over that whole situation. But wow. I divide OJ into two categories. I got the OJ Simpson. I, I, as a young man, I grew up and knew uh, the juice, one of the greatest running backs to ever do it. The one that only dude that made me know who the Buffalo Bills were. The only man to run for two thousand yards in the regular season, and he did that in fourteen games, dog. Mm-hmm. Um. And I separate that from this melee of stuff that took place that became his life afterwards. So all I all I can say about it is, you know, to him and I, I wish I wish peace and praying for his family and everybody else's family out there throughout that whole thing. I don't think somebody's death is something to be looked at or celebrated. So Yeah, and I'll wrap up with the verdict. The verdict date was October 3rd, 1995. It was my first year of teaching. We were told explicitly not to react, not to say anything, and again, no cell phones. So when we say we held information, kids didn't know, okay? Now kids know everything before you know. When the verdict was read, I was in my car at a stoplight, and there was another car next to me listening to the same music station. Again, no satellite radio. I think we were listening to Donnie Simpson. That's my guess. Okay. Uh, when the verdict was read, the DJ played the Jackson songs. Can you feel it? Looked at the guy. Guy looked at me, shrugged our shoulders. We drove off. That's all I got. So on behalf of my man, George Ockett, longtime lifelong friend who probably has the same kind of moment. I'm Dr. Keith Adams saying thank you for listening and or watching the Eye Coaches podcast. We'll see you on the sidelines. Till next time, take care. The Odd Coaches Podcast is sponsored by the CKA Save Project. The CKA Save Project is an industry leader in providing student-athlete academic and athletic support. From assessing student-athletes' academic and athletic skills to measuring and monitoring student-athlete academic progress to improving student-athlete time management and organizational skills, the CKA SAVE Project provides wraparound services for student-athletes from middle school through college. For more information, visit us on the web at www.ckasaveproject.org 
or schedule a free consultation with Dr. Keith Adams by emailing cka at cka.saveproject.org. We hope you enjoyed today's show. The Odd Coaches Podcast drops new episodes every Tuesday through Friday on most weeks. Make sure you subscribe to the Odd Coaches Podcast on Apple Music, iHeartRadio, Podbean, Spotify, and YouTube. Follow the Odd Coaches Podcast on Twitter and Instagram at Odd Coaches. Follow Dr. Adams on Twitter and Instagram at CKA Save Project. In addition, follow Coach Mike Francis on Twitter and Instagram at Coach Franchise, spelled Coach F R A N C H I Z E. For more information about the CKA Save Project, please visit them on the web at www.cka.saveproject.org. See you next time on the Odd Coaches Podcast.